Let's use the sunflower dye found in Color Nature food colors to do some experiments. Now the sunflower dye contains turmeric, and turmeric contains the molecule curcumin. Curcumin is a nonpolar compound, and so we would expect curcumin to dissolve fairly well in a nonpolar solvent such as this acetone in this flask. I add the sunflower dye to the acetone and give it a swirl and I see that indeed the sunflower dye dissolves very well in the acetone. That's probably from the curcumin. I'm going to take the same sunflower dye and we're going to add some to some water over here which is a polar solvent. We see it doesn't dissolve as well in the water. We get a cloudy appearance when we try to dissolve the dye in water and that indicates that the curcumin is not dissolving into the water. However, upon addition of base, curcumin loses protons and becomes negatively charged. So if I had some base to this water suspension over here, let's add a couple drops, that should form the ion form of curcumin, which we'll see a color change, and that also shows that the curcumin dissolves into the water. It's interesting to note that curcumin also fluoresces under ultraviolet light. We can see that fairly well by taking a UV light and shining it onto the acetone solution. And it gives off a nice bright yellow green glow. Let's explore the acid base indicator properties of curcumin a little bit further. In each of these flasks, I've dissolved a little bit of the sunflower dye into some acetone. Into the first flask, I'm going to pour some buffer at pH 4. Into the second flask, I'm going to pour some buffer at pH 7. To the next flask, I will pour some buffer at pH 8. Next, pH 9. pH 10, pH 12, and finally pH 14. Let's observe the fluorescence of each of the resulting solutions. We see a nice yellow-green fluorescence at the low pH that persists fairly well at pH 7 and at pH 8. That fluorescence appears to be lost at pH 9, 10, and 12. And yet there seems to be a little bit of orange fluorescence that's regained at the very high pH. Finally, it's interesting to note that curcumin binds to borates to form a rose-colored complex called rosocyanin. So we're going to see if we can't make use of the curcumin found in sunflower dye to form some rosocyanin. Again, there's some sunflower dye dissolved in acetone. And here I have some liquid starch that contains sodium tetraborate which is a borate. So that should react with the curcumin dissolved in the uh, acetone solution to form rosocyanin. Well sure enough we get a red colored 
mixture, which indicates the presence of rosocyanin, and that further gives me confidence that the sunflower dye contains curcumin.